Selecting crops and crop combination for aquaponics. Aquaponics by its very nature involves three different living organisms. It involves fish, bacteria and plants. Therefore, one must find a good match where the conditions required by the fish for optimal growth are similar to those of the plants and are similar to those of the bacteria to be used within the same system. The key variables to consider here are the temperature and the nutrient requirements of these different components. Let's look at the bacteria first. The bacteria are the key to the health of your system. Their optimal growth occurs at a temperature of about 27 degrees Celsius. When we design an aquaponic system, we always ensure that the biofilter or grow beds exceed the capacity requirement for the bacteria. Bear in mind that within an aquaponic system, if you're using an ebb and flow technique, that the bacteria not only have the responsibility of breaking down the ammonia, but also of breaking down the solids produced by the fish. If we have more nutrients within the system, we therefore also require more bacteria. It is also very important that the dissolved oxygen levels should remain saturated at all times for optimal performance of these bacteria. Now people will often say, hang on a moment, you say that the temperature for bacterial growth should be around 27 degrees Celsius, but I'm wanting to do trout in my aquaponic system. Does that mean the bacteria are ineffective or inactive? No, it doesn't, but it does mean that they are less effective which means that when we design systems for trout aquaponics, the biofilter ratio needs to be much higher than when we are farming fish such as tilapia or catfish, where the optimal temperature is almost identical to the optimal for bacteria. Then in terms of the fish species, there are many, many suitable species to choose from. If you are farming fish for food fish purposes, you could be doing trout, tilapia, carp, catfish, possibly pangasius. If you're farming for ornamental use, it could be koi, goldfish, or any one of the other ornamental fish species. Bear in mind with ornamental fish though, that generally they are stocked at much lower densities than food fish, so as not to compromise their fins or body color in any way. And this results in far lower nutrient levels than is ideal in an aquaponics environment for the plants. Let's look at rainbow trout first. Rainbow trout is a cold water species. The maximum temperature they can survive is about 22 degrees Celsius. They are also sensitive. They are sensitive to adverse water quality conditions and they are sensitive to rough handling. But the advantage is that they grow to a kilo in a matter of about 12 months. The species is fairly sensitive and that translates to an increase in risk. If your pumps stop because of a power failure, there absolutely has to be a backup generator. Otherwise, you will lose all your fish within a fairly short space of time. The joy for trout, however, is that the market demand is high within South Africa. The feed price in South Africa is currently around 12 rand per kilogram for trout, and the market price is about 65 rand per kilo. So clearly, there is a good potential margin for profit. Tilapia is the next species group to consider, and I say species group because it is not a single species, but rather a group name. They are a tropical group of fish, and the optimal temperature for most species is about 28 degrees Celsius. They are very hardy. They are often referred to as being bulletproof, for exactly this reason. Within South Africa, we are obliged to use a rather slow-growing species called Oreochromus mosambicus. This fish grows to only about 450 to 500 grams in a 12-month period. The international species, Oreochromus niloticus, is a far faster growing species and exceeds 1.1 kilos in the same 12-month period. Tilapia rendalii is another species which is often used in aquaponics, primarily because it is largely vegetarian, and people mistakenly believe that they can feed their vegetable remains to the tilapia and achieve good growth. 
This is not true. Yes, they will grow, but they will not grow optimally when only fed plant material. They still require the diet to be based on a high quality artificial feed. The feed for tilapia in South Africa is currently about 10 rand per kilogram. The market is fair in terms of demand and the demand is growing. But the market price is only about 35 rand per kilo in the best instances. Carp is also an option. Carp is currently an illegal species within South Africa. But it is present throughout the country so the real risk to the environment is very low. It grows well, attaining 1 kg in about 10 months. The market demand is fairly good, provided the price is low. Currently, we're talking about in the region of 20 rand per kilo or less. Given that the feed cost is about 10 rand per kg and market price should be around three times the feed price, you can see that there is very little scope for profit when farming carp within an aquaponics system. The real advantage of carp is not only that they are fairly tough, but also that their optimal temperature is a fairly moderate 24 degrees Celsius, which means that they are a good match for certain plant crops that are requiring a lower temperature than is the optimal for tilapia. Another species which is a very good prospect for aquaponics in southern Africa, in fact throughout Africa, is the catfish. Carius garipinus. This is a super tough species. During the first three weeks or so of life, they are enormously fragile fish and mortality rates are very high. But after the first three weeks, they are very, very tough fish. They are air breathing and they display very fast growth of 1 kg within a mere six months from egg. They are also tropical fish and a temperature of 28 degrees Celsius is once again ideal. Because they are air breathing, we can stock them at densities of exceeding 500 kilograms per cubic meter. This makes them very suitable for an aquaponic system which is aiming to produce tomatoes and other high nutrient requirement crops. Catfish feed currently sells for about 10 rand per kilo in South Africa and the market demand is good at a very low price but as soon as the price increases to a commercially viable level unfortunately the demand tapers off. This is true for much of Africa but in certain parts of West Africa most notably Nigeria and the Cameroon there is a very good demand for catfish and it is in fact the preferred species. Pangasius is a Vietnamese catfish species for which there is also a very good demand because of the high quality of their fillets. Frozen fillets are currently imported from Vietnam into southern Africa. This is a tropical species and again a temperature of about 28 degrees Celsius appears to be ideal. They grow rapidly attaining about 1 kg in 10 months. And because they are aired breathing, they can again be stocked at very high densities. Unfortunately, spawning Pangasius is tricky. And currently, all the fingerlings are still imported, which means that they are expensive. They currently land at about 5 rand per fish. The market for fresh Pangasius has been untested until recently. We put a first batch of Pangasius on the market about a month ago, and they were very, very well received at a higher price due to the fact that they were a fresh product. However, this market has by no means been properly tested. That brings us to the end of the fish crops. There are many, many other options. But let's park fish for a moment and look at the plants, the third major component of an aquaponics system. So, if we're looking at the plants, the starting point has got to be at what does the market want. Look for niches, because niches will often offer you better value for money. And look for unseasonal crops. It's those unseasonal crops that will also offer you a high profit potential. Bear in mind that leafy greens do exceptionally well in aquaponics. Not only basil, but also many of the other leafy greens, such as lettuce, mint, watercress, rocket, coriander, and so forth. All of these crops, the leafy crops, require a fairly low nutrient level, which makes it a, an easier option to produce. 
and they are very variable in terms of temperatures. Rocket and basil may prefer a temperature of about 28 degrees, whereas lettuce prefers a temperature of about 22. Looking at our fruiting crops, the fruiting crops generally have a much higher nutrient requirement than do the leafy crops. And once again, there are many options there representing very different temperature requirements. If we have a look at this chart, what I've attempted to do here is take a couple of the typical plants and typical fish options suitable for aquaponics to compare them to see who would be a natural good mix. If we look at the fish first, you can see a, the trout's optimal temperature is about 16 degrees Celsius. None of the plants grow optimally at this temperature. It's too low. But lettuce and peas both do well in the early 20s and are therefore the best mix for a trout plant type system. Carp grow optimally at about 24 degrees Celsius. And the vertical line for Swiss shard and carp is perfectly aligned. The carp could be grown with the warmer crops, or they could be grown with the cooler crops, making them a very versatile fish species for use in aquaponics. If we have a look at the tilapia, the optimal temperature is indicated by the vertical bar over about 28 degrees Celsius. Many of the crops, tomatoes, beans, peppers, brinjals, and even cucumbers, grow optimally in the same sort of region as the optimal temperature for tilapia, making them a very suitable companion. So, what crops thrive in aquaponics? Well, as mentioned before, leafy crops do the best. Lettuce, herbs, including basil and rocket, do exceptionally well. Many of the fruiting crops, such as tomatoes, cucumbers, squash, peppers, brinjals, we've even grown watermelon, they do very well as well. The flowering crops, we don't know. I've never done it, but there's every reason to believe that they grow exceptionally well. And given the fact that they're inside a greenhouse tunnel, the quality of those flowers should be very good as well. There's also microgreens. We've grown microgreens very successfully. The problem we have is not producing the microgreens, but selling them in the small town in which we are located. In conclusion, therefore, 80 to 90 percent of the income will typically come from the plant crops. So the plant crop should determine the selected conditions that the aquaponic system is going to be managed under. It may be best to do different crops in summer and winter. And the selection of fish will therefore be a function of your selection of plants.